Hi, everyone. Uh, we're going to get started now on session five of our World of Royalties webinar. Um, today, we're going to be going in depth and giving you a little sneak peek on the royalties dashboard, um, what it looks like on our end, and how you're able to use that to the best of your ability. Uh, a huge thank you to all of those who have attended all of the sessions of this series, or even just a few. Um, and for those of those who haven't, we really appreciate you um, going back and watching them as well, um, and just using this to educate yourself. Um, as many of you have already done, you could interact in the chat box. Um, you could ask questions throughout, and we'll try to get to them in the Q&A session. Uh, if we don't, and it's more of a specific situation, we will reach out afterwards. Um, and you will receive an email after this session is over with the link to rewatch it at any time. Um, and all of the sessions from this series will be available on that exact page. So you could watch from top to bottom, um, share with your friends or your classmates who are wanting to know a little bit more about royalties um, so that they could learn this stuff too. We are your hosts today. I'm Noelle, and this is Samantha. Hi, everyone. Um, as some of you might remember from the previous sessions, I am on the client acquisition team as a publishing specialist, so I handle a lot of inbound leads and help educate creators and businesses and representatives on um, the world of music publishing and how SongTrust can solve a lot of the problems that people come across. And now Sam can tell you a little bit about herself. She's an assistant manager on the royalties team here. Yep, so like she said, I'm the assistant manager for the Song Trust Royalties team. Um, so what we do is we make sure we're getting your money um, and then make sure that we are paying it out, getting all the information in your dashboard, getting you the best and cleanest data as possible to help you guys inform yourselves on really everything about your music and your use and your payments. Okay, let's get started. Um, so for today's agenda, um, hopefully after the webinar, you'll have a better understanding of the Song Trust Royalties Dashboard. Uh, whether you're a client or you're thinking about being a client or you're just here to learn a little bit about royalties, this will be really helpful um, for you to see how to best utilize the filters and the tools and the graphs that we provide, um, and even just to learn a little bit about the royalties that are earned. Um, you will also have a better understanding of how we pay out royalties and the important information we need from you in order to pay these royalties out. And you will also learn some tips on how to utilize the graphing features efficiently and make the most out of your account dashboard. As a thank you uh, for joining today's session, we'd like to offer you a 25% discount on your one-time registration fee for SongTrust. Um, you should see an offer pop up towards the chat box and the code will not be automatically applied and is case sensitive. So if you are planning on using it, um, just copy and paste it on the sign-up page, um, and you can just click the button that's by the offer to be taken to the sign-up page. The offer will be available till the end of the webinar. We just wanted to make it available to you the whole time um, as a thank you for joining today. So just a little reminder about what it means to be a rights owner. Um, so when you create a song, whether you just wrote lyrics on a piece of paper or you created a demo, you own the copyright to that work and you are the publisher. So you own all the rights um, and you have different rights that come along with owning that copyright, um, which are reproducing the work, distributing copies of the work, performing the work publicly, making a derivative work and displaying the work publicly. And from all these different uses, you are generating different types of royalties that are owed to you. And those different, different types of royalties are mechanical, performance and micro sync. Here we have the diagram of the way that an original song is broken down in the music industry. Um, we have on the left side, the composition, and on the right side, the master recording. Um, publishers, and here at SongTrust, we deal with collecting on the composition. So collecting the royalties that are generated from your ownership of that original composition. Um, those composition royalties are broken down into performance and mechanical royalties. Performance royalties are broken down into the writer's share and the publisher's share, and mechanical royalties are only paid out to publishers. So as you can see by all these different layers, there's a lot of different revenue sources that are coming from your composition, 
And it's really hard for an individual artist or even just a small publishing company to be collecting on all these different revenues, uh, which is something that we help with here at Song Trust. The two red highlighted circles are um, what we allow creators and rights owners to access. And on the right side for the master recording, which is broken down into neighboring rights and master recording royalties, which are also referred to as mechanical royalties, but it's not to get confused. There are both mechanical royalties owed to the composition and the master recording. So just breaking down the different types of royalties, performance royalties are generated whenever your song is publicly performed or played in a public space. So this could be a live performance at a huge venue, a live performance at a restaurant, bar, or cafe, your music being played at a venue or a bar, um, streaming services, interactive radio, all of those would generate a performance royalty. Mechanical royalties are generated when your song is digitally streamed or physically reproduced. This could be like a CD or a vinyl, even a digital download from iTunes or Amazon Music. Um, and they're also generated from streaming services. Um, it's really important to notice that streaming services are on both performance and mechanical royalties. So one stream of your song is generating both, uh, which is another really great point of why it's not enough to just be affiliated with ASCAP or BMI. You need to be with a publishing administrator who's registering your works with the mechanical societies so you could capitalize on all of those royalties. We also have micro sync royalties, which are generated from the use of your music in videos, like on YouTube. Uh, if anybody has any questions on that, definitely watch uh, session three first and see the great information that Julie, our YouTube specialist, laid out in that session when she really goes in depth about that. Um, a little bit of background about Song Trust. We've been around for about eight years and we're a global publishing administrator who helps any rights owners or creators access their global publishing royalties. Um, any song that's added into our system will be registered accurately with 45 performance and mechanical societies around the world, actually over 45. Um, but it's just a really great way to streamline your publishing process and Save a lot of time also for those of you who have gone and registered songs at different societies, you know, it's pretty time consuming to do them individually. Um, so by doing them just once at Song Trust, you're, you can make sure that you're owning all of that global publishing royalties. We represent currently over 150,000 songwriters and 20,000 music publishers to represent over 1 million copyrights currently in our system. Um, you've probably seen this before. This is just a little bit about our terms, a general overview that it's super flexible, um, a really easy solution to collect your global publishing royalties that really didn't exist before. And you could just see how much more flexible we are than a traditional publishing deal and how you're able to own all your rights. Um, we have only a one-time sign-up fee of $100, um, which would be discounted today. If you use the 25% off code. Um, and we take a 15% fee on the royalties that are coming through our system. So that only includes the publisher's share. Our clients always will receive their writer's share directly from their PRO, and we will never touch that. So in general, when you earn royalties, the process is you finish the song and distribute the song to make sure that um, there are being uses and streams. And then the PROs and CMOs automatically send, song, send the royalties to Song Trust for the registered songs. So as long as you have added your songs to your Song Trust account, um, the PROs know who to pay for that writer's and publisher share. So they automatically pay that publisher share out to Song Trust. And then we pay out directly to the songwriter's account um, on a quarterly basis, so four times a year. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Sam so that she could tell you guys what exactly the information is that you would need to provide us with in order for us to pay you out your royalties. Um, so in order for us to pay you out, it's really pretty simple. Um, after you register your songs, you have to make sure that you have your tax information filled out um, for your year end taxes. And we also offer a direct deposit option, which is great. 
Um, and that is, we use a service called Payoneer for that, and it's great. You can go in, put in your bank details. You don't have to think about it quarterly. You'll just get a notification saying you've been paid by SongTrust. Um, your royalties are there. And then you can log into your dashboard and see exactly where those royalties are coming from. So going into our next section now, I'm going to give you a little tour about exactly what that looks like and what information you'd be getting. So through this, I'm going to be going over the four main parts. So first we have our statement portion. Um, then I'll go into reports, our maps, and the ability to export all this information to your computer. So to start with the statement section, this is just a basic overview. So you'll see here there's an overview and a detailed section, which I'll get into. If you had multiple songwriters, so you can create an account and then add all of your bandmates on the account for you. And here, if that was the case, you'd be able to drop down and actually with a filter for each individual songwriter, which is great. So you can see exactly who's owed what, if there are some bandmates or some writers you're representing or managing that wrote some song that's not for all of the writers, you'd be able to see all of that breakdown here. Um, so to start, this is a breakdown primarily of what we call income type or royalty type, which are performance, mechanical, sync, print, and sometimes other, which would mainly be like YouTube royalties or micro sync. So here you can see you can actually filter for different columns, or not different columns, different quarters. So you can see comparatively over time, you can also filter to just view one at a time if you wanted to. And then down here, we actually have the percentages, which are also represented in this nice little pie chart, in addition to the actual totals per, per royalty type. So, whoops. So if you change overview to detail, this is just a more drilled down version where you can actually see what kind of specific royalty types there are, in addition to mechanical performance. So here, if we know that the royalties is being generated from a digital source and it's mechanical, we'll actually label that for you. Basically, we never really want to just say mechanical or performance. We want to give you guys the best data as possible. And really, we're kind of at the mercy of the societies because we collect from so many societies, so many different territories. Everyone's infrastructure and data is a little bit different. And so our goal is to really just make the most of the data that we're getting and to provide it here for you. So the next section I'm going to look into is the reports, where you can really get into the nitty gritty of all of the royalty data. So let me just change the filter here to look at a smaller portion. So here you can see over time how, many, how much royalties you're generating. And then you have all of this information, which is straight from the sources. It's our job to collect this money and then match it to your song in our system. And then that gets pushed here for you to do whatever you like with it. So you can see, I'll just go over the columns and kind of like what they mean. So you have song title when it was earned. So earned on is really like, in this case, so HFA Spotify income. That means that this income was streamed, or not this income, your songs were streamed during this time period. Reported on is when we process it. So there's normally a quarter lie between us receiving it or processing it and paying it out. Um, just because we need time to get through all the statements. We process, I think, if we're up to like 800 statements a quarter. So our team does a great job of making sure we get through all of that in a very detail-oriented way. And then we have royalty type again. So on a line by line basis, you can see exactly what kind of royalty you're generating, the territory. You can also filter all of these. So I'm going to click down just so you can see a little sample of exactly all the territories we collect from. This is just a sample, but look at all these wonderful territories. And then society. So society is really key because society is generally the bridge between where people are consuming your music and where you're getting paid. So you can see here, Spotify is where this song is being streamed. And HFA is a mechanical society in the US that would collect that income, and then they pay it to SongTrust and we map it up to you. So the key point here is that SongTrust has a relationship with all of these societies, and you'll see how many are not ASCAP or BMI. So that's why it's really important, as discussed earlier on that one slide where we had like the three points where it was writer share, um, performance, publisher share, and mechanical share. That's where we're bridging the gap for you. And then let me just nudge it over a little bit. Here we have income type group. So you can see more broadly is in mechanical performance or print 
royalty amount received is the amount we actually receive from the society, the original data. And then if, because we take 15%, amount earned is the actual amount that we would pay out to you. And on the bottom here, you can see we have these lovely summary points in green, um, which is really designed to help you get the most out of your data and digest it. Instead of just looking at all these details, we don't want anyone to be overwhelmed, be like, ah, oh, I have all this great data, what do I do with it? So here you can see like top earning song, top earning period, the top earning royalty type, territory, all this great information to help you make the most out of the data that we're providing you. Oops. And then going back up to our map section. So this is super fun. I love this. I always found this to be the most fun part about <laughs> the royalties dashboard. So it's literally like a heat map um, for where we're collecting royalties from. So here you can hover over the territory and see exactly how much money we've collected from those sources, or not from those sources, from those territories. And then I always like to jump right to world because that will show you everything. And here you can hover all over all these lovely territories and see all the money you're collecting. Uh, if you ever see zero, so this is a very common question we get. Uh, why do I have these Spotify lines and it's showing 0% or zero dollars in income? Um, it really amounts to the rates per unit. And by unit, I mean stream. So I'm sure all of you know that streaming rates are very low, like micro pennies. So if you only have 10 streams, the society will still report that data to us that it's been recorded and show us that they're doing their job basically. Um, and they'll, unfortunately, it'll sometimes look like zero dollars. But this is wonderful because I would like to hope that we get this data for our clients and then you guys can use the most of it by maybe mapping out a tour. I think that would be the yeah, best even use Even marketing this. your promotion to focus in those areas might be really helpful. To Absolutely. save some time and money, which is always important. Definitely. And then the very last section here is the ability to export statements. So this would export just to like a standard Excel. So here you can export either all your data. You could also choose last period that you were paid. Specifically, that's mostly designed for when we email out our fresh payments. And then you can go see exactly what you earned for that statement period. In addition to if you want to look at like a specific song. You can also do that. And I think that is pretty much it. Do you guys have anything to add that I missed? I don't think so. I think just the main point is that this is such a great tool for you to use to find out where exactly your royalties are coming from and increase those. Um, and it's really our goal to help you become a better business person when it comes to your music. Um, because you care so much about it and you can be spending more of your time creating and doing what you love while we handle all of this back end stuff and then just provide you with the information that you need. Um, okay, so for those of you who haven't made the decision to create a song trust account yet and you aren't really sure about what kind of royalties would be out there for you, we have this really great tool called the Royalty Estimator. Um, there is some criteria that you have to meet in order to get an actual estimate from it. Um, you have to have over 10,000 streams in the U.S. slash Canada. Um, that is where the data comes from, is just the U.S. and Canada. So as long as you have over 10,000 streams, just give it a shot and see if you could get an estimate for one of your songs. It is a song-by-song -song basis. Um, so for each song that you enter, you would receive an email with your estimated earnings for that song. And we give a pretty large range when we send out the estimates just because um, we can't make any promises about what the societies have held on to over the years as far as retroactive royalties. So maybe a lot of those 10,000 streams happened in the past. Hopefully it was in the past two, three years and we'd be able to collect on that. But like I said, we can't make any promises. And there's also different royalty rates per type of stream and per territory. So we just like to give a range um, to give people an idea of what they are missing out on by just being with their PRO or not even being affiliated at all with a PRO. Um, the estimates consist of both the publisher's share of your performance royalties and your publisher mechanicals. So if you remember the breakdown of the original song, 
you have the performance royalties broken down into writers and publisher share and the mechanical royalties that are just the publisher share. So the estimates only consist of those publisher share and the writer share is not included because we would never touch that as your publisher. We will include a link in the chat box so that you guys can uh, go to the royalty estimator and use it. Um, it's definitely a really great tool. Just put any of your songs in there and the percentage that you own and we'll tell you about how much you should have already earned in publishing royalties. Okay, so while some of you guys are checking that out, we'll just get right into the Q&A session. Um, a lot of you have been using the chat box. Thank you for participating and asking questions in there. Um, and we're just going to get started on some of those. So why does it take six to nine months to see my first royalty statement? I don't think I touched on this in talking about the terms, but once your songs are added to your song trust account, you the global registration process takes about six to nine months. So to create realistic expectations, um, definitely don't expect any royalties in your dashboard until that nine month period. Do you have anything to add about that? Why why it takes so long? Sure. So, I mean, initially we have to receive your songs and then we send them out and register them with each society. And every side, I'm sure you touch on this, every society um, works at their own pace and has a different infrastructure in terms of technology. And so really like each part of the process kind of takes, I would say, like a quarter. So the registration process, I would say, probably takes like full round circle for us to get confirmation they've been registered um, up to three months, depending, normally much sooner. And then it probably takes a little bit longer for them to actually start collecting your royalties and matching the data in their system to your compositions. Then they have to send all that information to us. And then we take we work in quarterly cycles, so three months to actually collect that revenue and then pay it out. So it's just we're reaching out to so many societies, so many countries, so many hands are touching your composition and that income associated with it. And so we really want our clients to understand our job is to get your money as soon as possible and to bear with us as we're trying to do that. Yeah, we have no incentive to hold on to the royalties and not pay them out to you. So as soon as they are in our system, once you hit that quarter, they would be deposited. Um, there is a minimum amount before you could start, before you can be paid out a royalty, which is $5. So as long as you have $5 of royalties in your account, you would be paid out at every quarter. We touched on this a little bit, but why is having a PRO slash CMO not enough? Um, as you saw on the royalty dashboard, there are so many territories and different types of royalties that are available for your music, especially if it is getting internationally streamed. So just registering that song at one society is not enough. Um, that society will only be collecting for that territory primarily. So it's just really important to make sure you're gathering all of the royalties that are owed to you. And just to add to that, I can list like a few societies that are non-US and if you don't recognize them, that's our job is to like go out and get that. So like thinking like Ireland is IMRO, mm -hmm. Spain is Sagai, um, Canada is SOCAN and CMRA. We Australia have is APRA AMCOS. AMCOS um, MCPS PRS for the UK. So if you've never heard of any of those names before, um, that's why you need Song Trust. <laughs> yeah, and like I said, even if you did have the ambition to go and contact these societies. It is such a long and hard process and oftentimes impossible. So just the fact that you only have to add the songs once in order to have them globally registered um, is a really great service that we provide. Um, what is the difference between my ASCAP money and song trust money? So that is specifically U.S. performance money. So what happens is, say, ASCAP receives money for your songs, and then they essentially split it in half, um, and then they pay out the writer performance directly to the writers. So that would never come to Song Trust. And then the other half comes to us. Um, and that normally happens like it's like a little bit of a lag. So one thing we see a lot is people get really worried, I would say, initially when they get and ask their first ASCAP payment and they don't see money from Song Trust. And that's because literally, say you have $10 at one point in time, at that point in time, they'll take $5, send it to you, take the other $5, send it to us, and then we have to process it, which takes down three months. Um, so that always scares people, but reassured it's coming. It's just one extra step to get the publishing. Yeah, and you wouldn't, have as, you wouldn't have access to that publisher share without a publisher. Um, so that one extra step is, you know, a small price to pay to receive those royalties at all. Um, okay. 
What is the difference between song trust and sound exchange? So sound exchange is gonna be on the recording side, um, which is not something we touch at all. And song it, trust is all publishing and yeah. We actually recommend our clients to sign up with sound exchange as well. They're the only organization in the US that collects on non-interactive streaming. Um, so things like internet radio, Sirius XM, um, not paid Pandora accounts, basically any streaming platform where you can't choose the next song that's coming on, that's what sound exchange collects for. So if you are looking to collect on all revenue streams, we recommend to definitely sign up with sound exchange. Um, okay, I have this question that is, I have multiple co-writers and band members. Would it be better to have each person have a separate account or have only one account that collects for all the co-writers and band members together. So this would really depend on the relationship that you have with these co-writers and band members. If you feel comfortable collecting on their behalf and sharing a login, then you're free to add them all to one account. It would be the same price and you, you know, essentially would be getting the same royalties. The only difference is those royalties would be paid to one bank account and you would be able to use the royalty statements like Sam showed us to break down who is owed what. So it really depends. It, you could do either um, just based on the relationship between you and your bandmates and co-writers. Um, in our system, it doesn't make much of a difference. Either way, we'll be collecting the same amount. Yep, and it's very filtered, or not very filtered, very easy to filter per songwriter. Um, so in my opinion, I think it's easier to have everything in one place, but. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. So if we and our, this is not my question. Um, if we and our songs are already registered with BMI, is there a way to re-register those with Song Trust and for only everyone else besides BMI since we've already done it? So once the song is added into our system, we send it out to all of the PROs and CMOs and societies and DSPs that we're affiliated with. So BMI would be included in that. If the songs were already registered at BMI, we would just be notifying BMI that we are now administering on those songs so that the publisher share would be coming through Song Trust and we would be expanding the song registrations. We can't really cut BMI out of the picture. They are your PRO and it's necessary for them to be in the picture. So. Yeah, that is the answer to that. Let's see what else we have. Okay, if I already have TuneCore Publishing, can I use Song Trust or move my relationship? Um, if you do have TuneCore Publishing right now, you could essentially use Song Trust for the songs that, maybe some new songs or songs that aren't opted into the publishing agreement with TuneCore. Um, if you would want to eventually move all of your publishing, all of your songs to collect publishing in one place at Song Trust, you would just have to end the agreement with TuneCore. And once it's over and you're out of it, then you could move those songs over to Song Trust, which is totally fine. Um, a lot of times people like to separate their distribution and their publishing. Um, when you do that, you have the freedom to add any songs to your song trust account, even songs that you haven't distributed yourself. So a lot of times people collaborate and maybe another artist is distributing it, but you want to earn your publishing royalties for your percentage. So that's a good way to do that. And if you're using a bunch of di different distribution services, it's also a really good way to use song trust. 